And so I want to I wanna preach a sermon. I, if I had to title it for my note takers, I would title it, Never Been This Way Before. Never Been This Way Before. Go ahead and look at your neighbors six feet apart, whatever you are, and just tell them, say, I've never been this way before. Come on, tell the rest of you, come on, participate. Yeah, I've never been this way before. Never been this way before. Hallelujah. Somebody say it again. I've never been this way before. Yeah. Two of the greatest fears, two of the greatest fears in humanity today are number one is public speaking, and I understand that completely. I can preach for 45 minutes or an hour or whatever, and, and I'm talking, man, I, it seems like God's doing a great thing. He is doing a great thing. I mispronounce one word, and boy, y'all get that. Say one thing wrong, and boy, y'all got that. You'll miss the whole 45 minutes and focus in on one word or one thing. I understand public speaking. I do it every day of my life. The second thing, the greatest fear in people today is doing something they've never done before. Doing something they've never done before. But here's what I want to get deep down in your spirit today. I love this. People who have changed the world, people who have changed the world, they did not settle for mediocrity. Hallelujah. They didn't settle for being casual. There was something in them, Brother Willie, that said, I love this, there's more. Mm. Yeah, people who change the world, there's something in them that says there's something more. There's something more. I want to see something that I've never seen before. God, I want you to do something in me that I've never experienced before. See, listen to me. I'm telling you, public speaking and doing something you've never done before will keep you in your seat for, till you're old. Yeah. Christopher Columbus. Everybody, everybody probably knows Christopher Columbus or read a story about Christopher Columbus. Knows he discovered America. And I've read, I've done my history, and I know there was another man that said, Christopher Columbus didn't do it. I've read, my, I've read history, all right? But Christopher Columbus, the man who discovered America, people laughed at him. They sure did. They made fun of him because of his belief. And this is a quote from Christopher Columbus. He said, there was more, there's more out there than has ever been discovered. 1492, Christopher Columbus, a man who was selling, and he seen something. I'm asking you today, are you willing to allow God to take you to a place you've never been before? I'm, will, I'm asking you today, are you willing to allow God, Elkhorn, I'm talking to you. Is this church willing to allow God to take her to a place that she's never been before? Or 10, 15, 20 years, are we going to be sitting in the same seats, same sanctuary, singing the same songs, doing the same thing, same people, and nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. What I'm preaching about and what I'm reading and watching and seeing in American churches today, listen to me, we're, we're more concerned about settling than discovering. I, I'm preaching better than y'all. It's okay. I'll get there in a minute. We're, we're, more, we're more concerned about fitting in than standing out. We're more concerned about just being an average little youth group, an average little church sitting on the side of the highway, beating the most churches in Southern Baptists. If we baptize more than two, you've already beat more than Southern Baptist churches. Most people are worried, more concerned about settling than they are discovering. Most people, I'm going to say it again, are more concerned about settling than they are discovering. My prayers for all of us, listen to this, is that we would never settle. Hallelujah. Elkhorn, listen, we will never settle for being just average. No, 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 no. Well, listen, I, I don't want us to be a regular, little, average, normal, little church. And I'm, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm concerned about churches today. That they are more concerned about settling than they are discovering. There is more out there. I'm telling you, we have, we have hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Jesus Christ. He is bigger. He is greater. He's God. He's, and there's more of him. I'm telling you, you've not arrived. I've not arrived. 
But I'm telling you, we got more churches today settling than discovering. Settling than discovering. We're selling in the valley of common. Yeah. An average church, average Christian. Listen, church doesn't have to be average. How many can testify? Church, listen, I got so tired. When I was a teenager, I didn't want to go to church. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Because I, I guess I, I, I didn't ever see the Bible come to life. I'd go to church and I'd see ugly business meetings. I, I, I'd go to church and I'd see them fuss and I'd see them fight. I'd go to church and I would never see anything different inside the church than I did outside the church. And I'm going to be honest with you. Can I just preach just a little bit? If I was a lost man, did not know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I was looking for a New Testament, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled church, if I never read the Bible, I feel the Holy Ghost. If I never read the Bible... And the only chapter I ever read was Acts chapter 2. And I showed up at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Would I see signs? Would I see wonders? Would I see miracles back in the church today? Somebody give God praise in here today. We're not going to settle for being our average little church sitting on the side of the highway. Mm. Woo! I feel the holy. I don't know what y'all feel out there. I don't know what Facebook feels, but it feels mighty fine up here. Woo, we in flood state this morning. There's no, listen, I thought about this too. There is nothing common about the season we're living in right now. Why should the church be common? <laughs> There's nothing normal. There is nothing average. There is nothing common about the season we're in today. So why should the church be average Normal and common. Uh, listen, I'm just telling y'all, we don't need, I wrote this in my notes, we don't need common worship. We don't need common leadership. We don't need common little talks here and common little talks there. Why don't you this morning just say, God, today, tear me up, hallelujah. God, today, touch me, God. Take me to a place I've never been before. I'm not gonna leave today until I'm at a place I've never been before. Somebody give God praise in today. I'm not gonna stop until you praise him. God, take me somewhere I have never been before. Woo! See, most people don't want that. Most people don't want to. You know why? Because you are a control freak. Well, I'll tell you what. No, I'll tell you what. There's going to be a day, if you don't learn how to praise him here, if you don't learn how to bow down here, because there's going to be a day in front of a bunch of people Every knee will bow, hallelujah. Every tongue will confess that he is God all by himself. I highly recommend the church have dress rehearsal. I highly recommend that, listen to me, we do not need casual Christianity in the 21st century. I'm just telling y'all, God doing something in me. I don't know where he's taking me. I've never been to this place where he's taking me. But I sort of like it. Listen, it's faith. It is faith. You say, Brian, see, I, I can see some of y'all right now. You ought to see what I can see up here. It's wonderful. I can look out there and some of your eyes are like just getting ready to pop out of your head. Some of you are sitting there going, don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm just telling you in Jesus Christ's name, God says we will do greater things. than what he did when he walked on earth. I'm just wondering today, El Corner, are y'all ready for God to take us to a place he's never taken us before? Are you ready for God to take your marriage to a place you've never been before? Listen, I don't want to be an old average preacher. I thought, uh, comb over, brute cologne. Stetson, y'all don't know what I'm talking about out there. The kids up in the eighties say, yeah, that's 80 stuff going on. Big hair, y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't want that. I want a touch from God today. 
I want God to tear me up today. I want to leave different than what I walked in here today. I want to feel something. This whole world, listen to me, this whole world, if you're invested in this world, you're going to come up short. You're going to come up short. You're going to come up short. I don't want to come and go church. That we just come in, we, and then we go, we come in, and then we go, and nothing happens. Watch this. We've already got way too many come and go Christians. We've already got way too many. We need some Christians. I'm telling y'all to get touched by God in a way that is undeniable. In a way that when people look at you, say, Brian, my God, that's all you talk about. That's all I'm going to preach about until y'all get this. We're not going to go to Revelation until you get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John down. I'm just telling you there is more. There is more. Everybody say, there is more. There is more of this Jesus stuff. Listen, people should know. How many of y'all agree with this? People should know you've been in church today. Come on, y'all. People should know that you've been in the presence of God today. And if you walk out mad, upset, angry, and nothing's changed, you didn't go to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church. That's okay. That's okay. I I'm going to smell different. Hey. I'm going to act different. I'm going to look different. I'm going to love different. Hallelujah. There's a place. I felt this in my spirit. You may not like preaching like this. And Elkhorn may not be the church for you. But here's what I'm telling you. There is a place that God is going to take Elkhorn Baptist Church that she's never been. Mark it down. Mark it down in your books. Mark it down in your books. The Bible says, listen to this, in Genesis chapter 13. I love this. In Genesis chapter 13, the Bible says Lot settled. Listen to this, he settled. We got a lot of people settling and not discovering. Settling and not discovering. Settling and not discovering. But the Bible says Lot settled. Watch this. In the plains of Zor. Ooh, Alice and I, 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 I thought about this one a lot. Zor means little. I'm going somewhere. Zor means little. In other words, <laughs> Lot settled just in a city and not expected anything. He said, I, I, I'm just going to get little, little. And I'm afraid Christians are settling for little prayer, little church services, little worship services, little sermons, hallelujah, little commitment, little faith. I'll do what I want to do. I'm telling y'all, if you've been touched by God, you'll never settle for little. You'll never settle for little. God's got so much more for us. Elkhorn, please know that God's bigger than 925 seats. Oh, come on, somebody. God is bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. Never thought I'd have to tell Christians that God is bigger. But we got a lot, a lot of Christians. They're settling for little. They're settling for little. I'm tired of little. I'm tired of little. Lord, I'm ready for you to send the fire. I'm ready for double for my trouble. I'm ready for God to open the floodgates of heaven. We sing about it. We sing about it. We sing about it. But God opened up the floodgates of heaven and healed this land. God, heal us from COVID. Come on, somebody. We don't need, I'm telling you, God is bigger than COVID. God is bigger than COVID. He's bigger. Whew. Hallelujah. And here's why I wrote my notes. I said, God, start with me. See, a lot of you are going to miss. Well, if they'll get it right, and they'll get it right, I'll get it right. No, no, no. I'm talking to the middle man. I'm talking to the middle woman. Church, I just love what God is doing. And here's what God spoke to me. And I want to give this to you. And I believe this is a word from the Lord. God spoke to me, and he said these words, greater the need greater the grace. Greater the need, oh, I'm, I'm going to stick there. Greater the grace. The more you need him, the more you seek him, the more you'll find of him. I'm just telling y'all, the greater the need, how bad do you need God this morning? 
If that tells me any indication, how that's about right, to be honest with you. How bad, how desperate are you this morning for my touch of God? God says, if you get the greater the need, greater the grace. Greater the need, greater the grace. Everybody say, greater the need, greater the grace. Come on, greater the need, greater the grace. Hey, Corn, here's what I'm praying. Here's what I'm praying. Please, 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 don't just settle. Be a discoverer. Don't just settle for an average little church service. Matter of fact, that makes God sick. We got too many lukewarm churches. We need a church in South Central that's willing to take chances. We need a church in South Central that says, you know what? I'll do whatever it takes to get somebody from hell to heaven. I'll do whatever it takes. Lord, take me, hallelujah, take me to a place I've never been before. Woo! I don't know what y'all feel. I felt this all week brewing in my spirit. I gave Dana a test run yesterday. Hallelujah. How many of you know because the word's in you, Mark? You can't just hold it. If I, look, I love Dana Michelle Rafferty. I love Dana Michelle. And she my boo. Y'all ain't got to ask me, do you love Dana? Watch it. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you I love her. You'll know what people love by what they talk about the most. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. You'll know what people love, what they talk about the most. Woo! Mm, <laughs> That's all right. I'm just telling you. I'm t- God don't want just an average little church. Sit- and I can hear say, Brian, I, want- I know God wrote in the Bible about the deep things of God. But I, I don't mind you being spiritual, but don't get too spiritual. Because that, that, just, that just makes me uneasy. That makes me uncomfortable that you're sitting there jumping and raising your hands. And I ain't going to hell. I, I'm not going to hell. And you, no, 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 y'all don't understand. I'm telling you, what you love is what you'll talk about. What God has brought you from, you'll testify about. Amen, somebody? I'm just telling you this. I, I, but be spiritual, but don't be too spiritual. I'm telling you, we got too many of those people. If the Bible was real, how many of y'all believe the Bible's real? Watch this. I'd have probably been very uncomfortable. Yeah. Have y'all been uncomfortable today? See, because I'm telling you, when God shows up, (laughs) supernatural things happen. You say, well, Brian, I'm telling y'all, there are some deep things in God. And yes, watch me. I'm going to preface this. There are people out there (laughs) that abuse the gifts. Listen to me. Lean in. There are people out there that will abuse anything. Anything. I had a pastor tell me, he said, Brian, he said, here's the dangerous thing about Elkhorn Baptist Church. He said, y'all are a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church. When y'all open the doors, the devil will walk in. Listen to me. There are cray-cray Everywhere. But I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to stand with this till y'all bury me or the horn sounds. Gifts, callings, prophecy, tongues, everything is still available in the Bible today. It is. It's still there. And there are real people who are spirit-filled that knows Jesus Christ, that preaches the Word of God, and has been with Him, and now you see it. I'm just telling y'all, it's real. Yes, there's great, but watch this. Who's worse? See, I think God's got, got bigger standards than we got. I think the person who is judging is just as bad as the people who's faking. Standing back and looking at God's possibilities, being a spectator, being a settler, and never discovering what God really has in store for us. I'm just telling y'all there's more. I'm just telling y'all there's more. Hallelujah. And here's what I, I feel sorry for that person. I really do. I'm to a point in my life, I feel sorry for the person who just spectates all the time and judges all the time. You know why? Tracy, here's what God told me. (laughs) 
because they've never been to that place before. Here's how I know it's true, Mark. Because if that person has been touched by God in that secret place, in that place that only he can give you the oil, you won't talk about him. You say, I want more of that. If you've ever been there, you'll want to go back. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I get a witness? Come on, can I get a witness? If you have ever been there, you'll want more. <laughs> you'll want to go back. You'll want a second touch from God. I know, I know, I know. Y'all pray for me because God's doing something in me. Because if the real church is going to rise up, the real word's got to be preached. So many pastors have become popular preachers in fitting in. And God never made you to fit in. He designed you to stand out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody say that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know why they went to the fire? Everybody else was bowing down to King Nebuchadnezzar, and they stood up. I'm just wondering today, how many of y'all going to bow down to the government? How many of y'all going to bow down to people? How many of you going to bow down? Are you going to say, you know what, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I've been touched by God. I've got the oil of God on my life. I can't shut up. I've got to tell somebody and what God has done for me. God, take, take me to a place I've never been before. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise in here today. Come on, don't just sit there. Take me to a place I've never been before, God, today. Do it right now, God. I'm ready for more, God. Hallelujah. I want more. I want more. Hallelujah. How many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? This, as a matter of fact, if you never felt this before, let me introduce you. That's called the Holy Ghost. Oh, Brian, I hear, I hear this in my heart. I ain't going to ever act like that. Oh, one day you will. Oh, but yeah, you will. Oh, but yeah, you will. What if I told you guys, hallelujah, whew, well, I feel the Holy Ghost. What if I told you guys, oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Christopher Columbus, history will record that he became blind later in life. You know why Christopher Columbus became blind? He was squint. He squint. I, y'all didn't know y'all was going to get a history class today, either, did you? He would squint. The sun would be so bright, he would squint his eyes just to see something bigger, something greater, something more. And what I'm trying to tell you guys is this. That's called faith, by the way, is when the sun, S-O-N, Touches you in such a way that you got to close your eyes and let him guide you through the path of righteousness. I'm just asking, did we got any squinting Christians today? Did anybody come in squinting? God's going to do something today. God's going to take me to a place I've never been before today. Y'all see what I'm saying? You got to be a squinter. Everybody say, you got to be a squinter. Yeah, come in expecting. I'd be highly disappointed if somebody don't get saved today. I'll be highly disappointed if somebody don't get born again, healed, and delivered today. I'll be highly disappointed. But here's what I know. I'm squinting. Who is it? Who is it, God? God, where are you taking me? Oh, I see something that maybe you don't see, but I see it. I see marriages coming back together. Hmm. I see Elkhorn coming back stronger than she's ever been before. I know some of you paying more attention to the empty seats. I see overflow. Come on, somebody. Are you a squinter? Are you squinting this morning? Do you want new land, new territory? Or are you just going to be an average little person? Average little youth group. We got too many of them. I'm praying this morning we become squinters. Hallelujah. Lord, take me to a place I've never been before. See, some of you think you've arrived. Some of you think you got it all. There is no more. I have heard this before. I got all of Jesus I want. This has been said in here. I've got all of Jesus that I want. Woo! It don't get no deeper than me. Sir, ma'am, you're at the wrong church today. Because this church believes that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, mind has cannot comprehend what God has in store for those who love him, who serve him. 
Uh, hallelujah. Joshua chapter 3, verse 4. I'm almost done. Praise team, you guys come. I'm trying to be a good steward of, my, of your time, my time. Joshua chapter 3, verse 4. I, I'm reading now the Good, New, good News translation. The vi- beginning of that verse, it says, this is what Joshua. Y'all got me? Everybody say, this is Joshua. The Bible says, you have never been this way before. Hold on now. I told you I'm going to back up when I preach. Joshua was preceding Moses. Moses just died. There was a new leader. There was a new man in town. His name was Joshua. Could you imagine following Moses? Lord, how would be like me trying to follow T.D. Jakes. Yeah, you're ready, you're ready. I got that, I got that, I can do that. Here was Joshua. I I feel the Here was Joshua. I got to settle my spirit down because I'm telling you, I believe this is a word for somebody. There was a new man in town. Moses was dead. And here was Joshua. And I'm telling you, Joshua, he, he had insecurities. He didn't understand And God says, listen to this, I'm going to take you to a place. Hallelujah. Joshua, you've never been before. And I love this because Joshua got to the Jordan. The Jordan was in flood state. It was was a disastrous, dangerous place. And here was Joshua preceding Moses. And he says, God says, I'm getting ready to do a new thing at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I'm getting ready to take your pastor to a place he's never been before. I'm going to do a new work in this congregation. And he said these words. He said, Joshua, take your shoes off. Joshua took his shoes off. Listen, a lot of people read this wrong. But if you read this right and get the right commentaries in Josephus, you'll get the right word. Scripture must back up Scripture. Don't ever take one verse and make a doctrine or a theology or you'll get 131 churches. Take the Bible. Because the Bible will stand by all by itself. I love this. He says, take your shoes off. And see, a lot of people think that the Jordan was like the Red Sea. But the Jordan was not like the Red Sea. The, the, the Red Sea split all at once. And they walked through. Y'all remember that vacation Bible school story, Right? The Jordan was different. He said, take your shoes off, and as you step, it will divide. Uh, uh As you step, it'll divide. There's a lot of people standing on the banks of the Jordan looking at the possibilities, and they have settled on the bank, and God's wanting to do a discovery in your life. Take your shoes off. You're standing on holy ground. Y'all listen to me. As he stepped, divided. He didn't divide all at once. Everybody, want, how I feel this. Everybody wants your miracle now. Everybody wants your kid to come back home now. Everybody wants your marriage to work now. What if I told you biblically, God, we're not waiting on God. God says, you take off your shoes because you're on holy ground. And as you step, your miracle will get closer. God, I don't understand it. I still got water in front of me. Step. Wow. Wow. I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Could you imagine when he got out in the middle of the Jordan and the walls of the water back this way was up, but in front of him they were still down. I could preach on this forever. I could preach on this. Because some of you are paying more attention to the walls than what God has already divided. I feel the Holy Ghost. I look back over my life, Allison, and I look back at all the walls, hallelujah, that God has divided in my life. And I'm standing here today that should make me praise Him every step of the way. I go, I'm going to give Him praise. I need somebody who can look back over your life and you see that God has divided the walls. Come on, there's 10 of you. I'm talking about God has divided the walls. He's taken me to a place I've never been before, but I can't look. Just stay up. 
Woo! Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody, y'all might as well stay up, I'm done. Somebody is paying more attention to the wall. You're settling. Than what you've already discovered. I'm telling y'all, if y'all were listening to me, you may have to chew on this sermon for a long time. But I'm telling you, thus saith the Lord. God told Joshua, he said, Joshua, I'm going to take you up to a place you have never been before. Jerry Bird, he's going to take you, hallelujah, to a place you have never been before. Molly Bird, little woman of God, God is all over you. You're a mighty little woman of God. God is going to take you to a place you've never been before. Praise team, we don't need a common worship. God, use me. You better watch out what you pray. God, do whatever you want to do, okay? I'm getting ready to take you to a place you've never been before. Take off your shoes and start stepping. Uh, uh Uh-huh. Everybody getting the word? So, 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 let me. How do you get to a place you've never been before? Really quick, I promise you. 60 seconds. No, two seconds. Yeah. How do you get to a place you've never been before? Come on, somebody. How do you get to that place you've never been before? You're having a Joshua moment. You know that there's there's banks of the Jordan on the other side. You know there's honey on the other side. You know there's miracles, signs, and wonders. Number one, here's what you got to do. God God spoke this to me. You got to want it. Y'all go ahead and sit down. Because I, I ain't going to lie. Sit down. Because I got to get... I, listen to me. I love y'all so much. I do. I love, I love this house. I feel... I know God's hands on Elkhorn. I know His hands in other places. And I praise God for that. But as, as the Joshua of this house... You gotta want it. Listen to me. I'm just trying to help y'all. I, I want it. And watch, if y'all don't want, if y'all don't want yours, I'll take yours. Sarah, this is not it. You mean to tell me, Greg, we have figured out God? You mean to tell me Elkhorn has patented Jesus? You mean to tell me, youth group, this is it? I'm telling y'all today, God is going to take us to a place, hallelujah, He has never taken us before, but we've got to want it. That means when gifts start going off in this church, don't question it. Don't, Don't be a settler. Be a discoverer. Be a discoverer. Be a discoverer. Now, if it's not Bible, it's my job as the, your pastor. I'll call it out. I'll call it out. I'm going to protect y'all. But listen, I'm telling you what God's doing to me, Holly. My fear, my concern is 10 years from now, will we still be in a common ground? Take your shoes off. Start stepping. And watch the water start to divide. You got to want it. Everybody said you got to want it. The second thing, that's Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, by the way. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for right. Hunger, you got to hunger for it. You got to want it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be. That's Bible, by the way. Number two comes from Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. You got to sanctify yourself. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. He told Joshua, Joshua, get away from him. What is it? Get away from him. You go into the upper room. You find me. You search me. You seek me. I'm going to, wow. He said, I'm going to do something new tomorrow. I love this, Sarah. So he wanted it. He separated himself. He got to his secret place. Matthew chapter 7. Also tells us to go into the secret place. The third thing is that, listen to me, you have to have blind faith. 
Did y'all hear me? You got to have blind faith. Joshua chapter 3 and Joshua chapter 4 talks about how blind Joshua was. Could you imagine this to take your shoes off? And Holly, I know there's a wall, there's something blocking you. But as you have the faith, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. Just step, Brian. God, this disease, this COVID is driving me crazy. God, I'm in my house. I'm quarantined. Just take a step. Christopher Columbus became blind. God, thank you. Became blind to discover. Most people who are spiritually blind are settlers, not discoverers. So I'm done. Y'all get the word today? Somebody give God praise in here. Come on. Come on. You got to want this. You got to want it. We've not figured this out. Watch this. You ready, Elkhorn? We're still discovering. We're still discovering. Y'all watch this. I've been married for 26 years, and I'm still discovering. All you married folk. Yeah. How many of y'all would agree with me? In a marriage, you discover all the time. Come on, bunch of chickens. Yeah, it's so funny, Joey. Me and Dana, we was, uh, I, I, anyway, she was talking. And Dana said, I didn't know that about you after 26 years of marriage, Courtney. And I said, Dana, I ain't going to tell you everything. Y'all can chew on that later. Text me. How many of you know we're not going to settle at this church? We're going to discover and discover and discover. Even if we got to squint, hallelujah, we're going to discover what God has in store for us. Greater things you will do. You hear me? We're not going to be a settling church. We're going to discover. The goodness of God, the miracles, the signs, and wonders. So I need you to stand to your feet. Everybody get to word today? Everybody get to word today? I hope you did, man. I hope you did. If not, you can go back online and listen. Amen? You got to want it. If you don't want it, watch this. You ain't going to get it. If you don't want this stuff, you've got all you're going to get. How many of y'all want more? Be honest with you. How many of y'all want more? Good. I'm at the right house then. You got you to set yourself apart. In other words, you got to take your shoes off. God, I'm vulnerable. I don't understand you how you're going to work it out. That's blind faith. But I'm going to step. I'm going to step. Y'all got the word? So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, bless your people. God, bring them to this altar. God, I pray that somebody got this word today. I know you gave it to me, but God, I give it to them. I pray to God believing that right now, that God, we would want it. God, we've not arrived as a church. God, there's so much more. Sanctify us. Take our shoes off. And God, may we have blind faith. May we be squinters in this house, God. May we discover all the good things that you have in store for us. I pray this prayer believing that all things are possible with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say it.